Let's take a look at the budget-friendly TP-Link AX1800 Wi-Fi 6 router. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. If you saw my video on when to consider replacing your home Wi-Fi router, you may remember that I was having some connection issues that were symptoms of impending router failure. I'll link to that video in the end card to this video if you'd like to learn more about when to replace your router. If you're watching this video, we'll assume you've decided to get a new router and narrow down your choices and are considering the TP-Link AX1800 Wi-Fi 6 router. Whether it's a good choice for you or not will be based on how you use your home network and how big your house is. For me, I do web browsing, stream to Amazon Fire Sticks on my TVs, but I don't do gaming. My house is about 2,400 square feet and is two stories. I also don't need to get coverage throughout a large backyard. With those basic criteria, I chose the TP-Link AX1800 dual band Wi-Fi 6 router as a basic budget-friendly router. It has good reviews and shows up on a variety of best of product review sites. Let's take a quick look at the router, the setup process, and some speed comparisons to my older router that it's replacing. Uh, so here's the box that the TP Link AX1800 comes in. You see that it's got a Wi Fi 6 label, it's got some ability to mesh using the One Mesh uh, technology. One of the things you'll want to keep in mind is the uh, some of the numbers are a little confusing sometimes. This is the AX1800 dual band router, which means it's got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands to it. Uh, but then it's got this Archer AX21 uh, nomenclature as well. So uh, those things can get a little confusing. So just I just point those things out to you. Um, on the side of the the box here, it's given you the port definitions and uh, what you're going to be seeing on it. And then on the back of the box, um, it's just the, kind of the usual marketing things of important things they want to call to your attention, especially if you were shopping in the store. But we're not, so let's take a look at what's inside the box. So let's first take a look at some of the odds and ends that uh, come in the box. There's a, an Ethernet cable here. Uh, it's the uh, Cat5e uh, Ethernet cable. You're going to be using this to connect this to uh, your internet source. There's a little sticky card here that you can label your uh, Wi-Fi network uh, bands that you name them during the setup process here. Uh, and then it's got the default SI, SSID and passwords here on this as well. Um, if you're going to... You can, Stick it to a car, stick it in your desk. You could put it on the bottom of the uh, the router itself, uh, but it's, it'll be some important information. You may just want to stick it in your installation guide uh, so that the router and the information aren't in the same place. Speaking of the installation guide, there's a quick setup guide right here that looks like it'll work pretty well. It's just a couple of pages, and uh, most of the setup is going to occur with the TP-Link tether app that you're going to have to download. We'll talk about that in a second. And then the power supply for the router itself. Speaking of the router, let's take a look at that. So this is the router itself. It's got a nice appearance. It's got vent holes here on the top, you know, a nice geometric design. It's got four antennas. Each of these have a little plastic sleeve on them that I haven't taken off yet. On the back, You've got, um, again, uh, an op pretty much an open back so that it should be have good heat transfer through the unit. It's got some little legs here. The front one or the back ones are silicon so that they should help it stay put on your desk. 
Again, the model number and uh, information is here. And, and plus, there's a couple of holes that if you want to mount this on a wall, you're able to do that. And so it's got the little detents either way. So you could mount it upside down or right side up uh, with the antennas up or down as you desire. And so that's really all there is on the bottom. And then on the back, we've got the, the WPS um, re, uh, programming button there. If you're going to use that kind of uh, connections, there's a little pinhole, a uh, reset button where you might stick a uh, tong of a paper clip in there to reset it. It's got a USB-A socket there that you could use to connect, uh, I'm guessing, a uh, hard drive. That's what I'm going to try. Um, the WAN button or the blue hole here is for your connection to your internet device. So that'll be your cable modem, DSL, whatever it is you're using. Uh, there are four hardwired uh, connections. And so uh, since this router is very close to my main uh, video editing computer here in my office, I'm going to connect via a hardwire to the, to the router. The power connector is right there and then an on-off button right there. So all in all, there's not much to it. Most of the magic is going to happen within the app. So let's move toward that. Um, I'm going to have this connected. Uh, it's, it'll be hard to see. So just know that I'm going to connect this to my cable modem, this to my uh, main computer. I'm going to connect a um, external hard drive to this USB. Hopefully that will work. And then bring the power supply up behind my desk and... Uh, uh, I'll have this sitting on the top shelf of a little hutch on my uh, computer desk with access to my on and off. So the next time we'll see this, it'll all be connected. You set up the router by using the TP-Link Tether app. By way of an overview, the app will ask you to sign into and establish a TP-Link account. It will then have you connect to the router using the router's set up Wi-Fi. Then you'll complete some registration and setup tasks before your home network is ready to connect. Be sure to have the small adhesive back device info sticker available. Here's what that process will look like. When you open the device you'll find a labeled my devices and it's found none so we want to add a device. We'll use this screen to start that process. Next, we're going to do add a router. We're going to identify the wireless router. Then we're going to connect our hardware. It tells you to power off the modem. Plug in your devices. Power up your modem again. Power up the router. Check the router's LEDs. And then we're good. Next, we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi network on the device. We've got the Wi-Fi screen of my Galaxy S10. We're going to use the 5G. We're going to enter a password, mark it as Auto Connect. And then we can see we've connected. We'll get a warning that the Internet's not available because we're using the router's Wi-Fi transmitter. It moves back in to connect to our network, step number two. It looks for our devices. finds the AX21, tells us to create a new password, and we're going to use the dynamic IP. You may have a need to use one of these other choices. We don't want to change our Mac Connect. We're going to name the network the same as we did before, the one it's replacing. Then we're going to set a time for the router to check for updates. And then we're going to apply our settings. We've connected to the network and it lists the network names and passwords there. I've got blurred out, reconnected, testing the settings, and we're basically done at this point. We look at the, the screen and we see we've got the two networks and then we're going to bind to our account. It gives us the account that we're logged in on, which is your email address. And it then comes back to the uh, network settings page. 
And then if we click on the tools, we can see we've got a, a lot of things that we can make changes to. Here in the system, you notice we have a red dot. So let's look at that. We see that we can do these things, but we have a firmware update that we can do. So let's update the firmware. Next, it'll tell us what we have, our release notes and so forth. We're going to update. It'll begin the process. It counts up to 100% as it goes through these various stages. It's a successful update. We've got the device identified again. We're going to log back into it, sees what we have connected to that router, and we're back to our Tools tab. And you can see the red dot is now missing from the uh, systems since we've just upgraded. With the app portion complete, a basic user is all set. If you want to connect a USB drive to the router, you'll have to access the router via a web browser. Here's a quick overview of what you'll find there. Now you can also set up the TP-Link uh, router using your web browser, a more traditional way to do it. And in fact, some of the things that are available on the browser are not available on the app. So in this case, I set up the router, got it on, all my devices connected just using the app. Uh, but if there are some other things that you want to do, like USB settings, for example, connecting a USB drive, uh, then you'll need to go into the router. Now, in this case, the router address, and it's in the quick start guide that you got with your router, is 192.168.0.1. To log in, you can either use your local password uh, or you can log in via your TP-Link account, which is what I've done here. And so, as you can see, then I have the, the internet, and it tells me my type and my MAC address, and and some other information here uh, that I'll probably gray out since uh, you maybe don't need to know that information. We can click over to the Archer AX21 and we're going to see again some of those same information, uh, what I've called my network, what my network password is, um, the fact that I don't have a guest um, network set up, chosen not to do that, uh, I can have some charts here on CPU and memory usage. And then you can see that I have my internet connection. And then I also have my LAN 1 connection, which is connected to the computer that I have here in my office that I do my editing on. And then when I click the internet, it tells me I have a dynamic uh, IP address and I'm not cloning any MAC addresses. Uh, and this I set up using the app. In my wireless tab, I can see then that I have some things that I can make and or, or personalize. The OFDMA, if we hit the button there with the question mark, it tells me that it enables multiple users to transmit data simultaneously, greatly improving speed. So I'm going to enable that, although I'm not sure how many of these type of devices I have here on my home network. The TWT. Again, it explains that it's target wait time and it allows these routers and clients to negotiate their periods to transmit and receive data packets. Um, and I'm not going to worry about that. Smart Connect default was on, wireless radio was on. Again, my network um, SSID and my security protocol that I'm using and my network password. Again, uh, those I'll gray out here. Uh, the network for the guests, I've not enabled. If I did, I would click those and choose the kind of security that I wanted to use. Now, here in the advanced areas where some of the things that were not available on the app, you'll find. So, we've got our network information. That was all the stuff that we just looked at. The LAN MAC address, DHCP server, dynamic DNS, all that stuff is there. In my TP Link ID, uh, this is my account information that I have with TP Link. 
And again, I'm going to gray this out, but it gives my account information and my device information. If I go to wireless, I can go to my wireless settings. Those are the things that I just looked at. Uh, USB is one of those things that's only available uh, via the router's interface on your web browser. And so if I wanted some USB storage, uh, I can plug it in and I have, I've got a Seagate drive uh, plugged in. And uh, this was one of the reasons why I was changing routers, frankly, uh, because I was always having trouble connecting to this drive with the previous router as it had gotten older. So I have the drive plugged in. If you haven't plugged it in yet, or if you didn't read it, you're gonna see a little button here that says scan. Uh, and then it'll scan for devices and then it'll come up like you see now. Now, what I found then is when I look at my uh, Windows File Manager, when I open up the network uh, icon there on the uh, Windows File Manager, then I'm gonna see uh, a device along with my other network devices uh, that says TP Share. And if I expand that, I'm going to see the folder with a small letter G. So there's my uh, small letter G. And, um, and if I click on that, I can uh, see all of the various folders and information that I've stored on this shared drive. So I was really pleased that worked right out of the box, loaded it, scanned it, and found it on File Manager. It was, as they say, easy peasy. You can access parental controls, um, choose your kind of security, uh, firewall, um, access controls. You can turn them on for the, specific, uh, the specified devices and some of the other things that are available to include the One Mesh uh, technology. I've got it defaulted to on here, uh, but I don't have any One Mesh, other One Mesh devices here in, in my system. And then I can go down to my system and I can check for things like firmware updates and so forth. In this chart, you'll see that, at least for me, this new router made quite a difference in Wi-Fi download speeds. I'm paying for internet services that promises up to 200 megabits per second. In other words, it's above average, but not top tier service, except as noted, I used my ISP server for the speed test and my Wi-Fi devices were in the same room as the router. My desktop is connected to the router via an Ethernet cable. My Galaxy phone is a Galaxy S10 and my laptop is a fairly new Lenovo convertible style machine. My wife's machine is a Lenovo that's several years old and is located away from the router on the first floor. I also used my phone to check speeds at a couple of points around my yard. My house has a stucco exterior, which means that it has a wrap of chicken wire used when applying the stucco. My guess is there is a bit of a Faraday effect due to the wire cage. In any case, my speeds in my front yard dropped quickly with limited connectivity by the time I reached the street. In my backyard, however, with large windows in the house, I had good speeds to the edge of my property, especially in my patio seating areas. I don't have a lot of time using this router, but from my initial experience, the setup was quite easy, the coverage in my home was solid, and speeds were much better than the router I was replacing. For $90 on Amazon here in January 2022, it seems like a good value. Again, if you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.